Hi, in this video we will talk about permutation and combination. We start with permutation. What is permutation? It is actually talking about arrangement of items. And what is combination? It is talking about the grouping of those items. Say you have item 1 and then you have item 2, then you have item 3 and then you have item 4 like this. And if you say that this is one arrangement of these four items and if I bring 3 over here and 2 is there as it is and 1 is coming in the third position and 4 is there. So this is another arrangement, right? So these are the different arrangements we can have with these four items. Now when we talk about combination, we will talk about the grouping of those items. That means these two arrangements belong to the same group. Why? Because you see that 1, 2, 3 and 4, all these four items are both involved in these two arrangements. So arrangement may differ, somebody is coming in front and somebody is going to the third position like that, but they belong to the same group because these four items form a group, right? So that grouping is combination and the different arrangements are called permutations, right? Now we have linear permutation as one type of permutation. It is nothing but the items are arranged in a linear fashion, okay? So suppose these items are people and they are sitting on their chairs. So you can see that A is in front of B and B is in front of C and C is in front of D. So when D comes over here in the first chair and A goes to the last chair, then that will be a different arrangement, clear? We have another type of permutation that is circular permutation where the items A, B, C and D are in circular position. So this is a table or a round table and A, B, C and D are sitting around that table. The difference between this circular and linear permutation is that if you start from A, then B comes, after B, then C comes, then after C, D comes. That means you can have an arrangement like A, B, C and D. And if you start from C, say, then D comes, then A comes, then B comes, then you have C, D, A and B. So we have got two arrangements like this. Now we talk about combination. We have four items now and we say this is arrangement one. We can have arrangement two like this, that B comes over here and D takes its place so that this is a different arrangement, so we have arrangement A2. We can also have arrangement like this, we can call it A3. So we have got three arrangements, but in every arrangement, you notice one thing that these four items all are involved and those same items have been used in all these three arrangements. Since the same items are there in all these three arrangements, we call that there is only one combination But we have three arrangements and these three arrangements are nothing but three permutations. Clear? Now we go for this linear permutation in details. We have this definition that is a number of unique possible ways a set of items can be arranged in a line. You notice the word unique here. And the second statement says that you can check some of those items or all of those items at a time. Now this at a time creates some confusion to the learners. Now I will clear it for you. Suppose there are three items here and we would like to take two items at a time from these three items. That means this is a source and from this source we would like to have two items and store those items in this queue. So what are the items we can have, rather what pairs we can have to store those inside this queue? We may have A and B. So A is in first position and B is in second position in this queue. So this is arrangement 1. We can have B in front and A behind B. So this is arrangement 2. Similarly, we can have AC. We can have CA. We can have BC. And we can have CB. So we have six unique arrangements or unique pairs when we consider two 
coins from this source of three coins. Now, when you pull two coins from these three coins, we call it a trial. You may have 10 trials. Now, out of the 10 trials, you may have AB again or AC again. Now, here AB is A1. Again, if you have AB, but this arrangement has been already labeled as A1. So, this AB is not unique. You notice the word unique. So, AB may be there in the list of 10 trials, but that second AB will not be counted. The second AC will not be counted. So, these will not be counted. So, in those 10 trials, you may have 10 pairs, but uniquely, you will only have 6 pairs. So, you have 6 permutations when you have 3 coins and you take 2 coins at a time and store those 2 coins inside this cube. We go for considering these 4 coins now. Say, permutations of 4 coins taken 1 at a time. That means, out of these 4 coins, every time you perform a trial, you select 1 coin and store it inside this cube. So, it may be A or it may be B or C or D. So, how many ways you have or how many options you have to fill this cube with a single element from this data source? So, you have A, B, C or D. Any one of them can come up here. So, A, B, C and D, all of them have the same priority to get inside this cube. So, you have four ways. Now, you convert this four to the factorial form we have learned in the previous video that you say here factorial 4 and since you want to get 4 from this factorial 4 you of course discard factorial 3 like this now you see here you have data that is n equal to 4 and you have data as r equal to 1 but here the formation is 4 factorial by 3 factorial now how will you get the factorial form from these two data that means 4 and 1 so, you rewrite this formation with 4 factorial and you replace this 3 with 4 and 1. That means if you write 4 minus 1, then it becomes 3. So, you write 4 minus 1 factorial. Now, we go for those 4 coins, but now we will take 2 coins at a time. That means every time we select 2 coins randomly from this bag of coins. Now, in this way, we can have 12 pairs of coins. It may be AB, it may be AC, it may be AD like that. And this BA, see, AB is already there, but BA is a different arrangement than AB because B is in front and here B is behind A. So we consider BA also as a unique arrangement. So in this way, we got 12 arrangements that we can have from this bag of coins. So we write 12 over here. Now we have to convert this 12 to factorial form. So you have data as 4 and you have data as 2. So we write 4 factorial and on the lower side we will write 2 factorial because 4 times 3 times makes 12. So you have to discard 2 factorial, right? Now we can write the 2 in the form of this 4 and 2 over here. So what we can write here, upper side is all right, 4 factorial. And the lower side will be 4 minus 2 factorial. Next, we go for this 4 coins and we now we take 3 coins at a time. That means every time we go for selecting coins from here, we take 3 coins and try to fill this cube. Now, how many arrangements we can have with 3 coins from this bag of 4 coins? These are the arrangements we can have with 3 coins from the bag of 4 coins. Here, how many are there? Say 1, 2, 3, 4. And this side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So, 24 arrangements we can have. And if I go for the formation of factorial, we can have 4 factorial by 1 factorial, right? Because we need 4 times 3 times 2. That will become 24. Now, 4 is there, but the other data is 3. And we have got 1 here. So, you have to replace this 1 using 4 and 3. So, we write the numerator as usual and make it 4 minus 3 factorial. Clear? Now, we go for permutations of 4 coins. 
with four at a time. Now this time we pull four coins from here and try to put it inside this queue. Now in how many ways we can do? Of course we can do that in 24 ways. So we write here 24 and we go for factorial like this. And we go for 0 factorial now because 0 factorial is also 1. So we write like this that 4 factorial by 4 minus 4 factorial. This becomes 0. So we get a pattern that 4 factorial by 4 minus 1 factorial. Here also 4 factorial by 4 minus 2 factorial. That means this portion is changing 1, 2, 3 and 4. And you see that this 1 is matching with this R. This 2 is matching with this 2. This 3 is this 3 and this 4 is this 4. That means if we generalize, then we get n factorial by n minus r factorial. So this will give you the unique possible arrangements from a data source like this taken r items at a time. Okay, This is written like this, that n p r. And it is equivalent to n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 times up to r terms. For example, the value of r is 1 and the n is 4. So we will go for only one term. That means only 4. For this case, r is 2. So we will go for two terms. That means 4 times 3. This is the first term, this is the second term. For this case, we will go for three terms because r is 3 here. So, 4 times 3 times 2. So, this value of r is actually denoting the number of terms you will have starting from n towards 1. Clear? Let's go for an example. A student need to pass in at least one paper. Notice this word, at least one paper, out of four papers. That means student may pass in one paper, two papers, three papers, or four papers. In any number of papers, the student gets passed, he will get a report card. Now the question is, if there are four papers in total, then how many possible report cards the student may have? Now here are the four papers. And we have got the first case when the student gets passed in one paper only. So we have n equal to 4. That is our data source is having four papers. And I got to get any one of these papers inside this box. So it may be p1 or p2 or p3 or p4. So any of the papers may get inside this box. So we may write n p r and n is 4 p and what is R? The R is 1 because we are taking one paper at a time to store this box. So we write 1 here and we get R equal to 1. That means one time we have to go for the multiplication starting from 4 towards 1. So we write 4 here and we stop. So when the student gets passed in one paper, there are four ways one report card will be issued to the student. We go for the second case. This time, the student gets passed in two papers. That means R equal to 2. And we have N4. So we have to fill these two boxes. Now for this first box, you have four ways to go. And whenever one paper gets inside this box, then you have only three options left. So for the second box, you have three options or three ways to fill this. So ultimately, you get 4 times 3. That means 12 ways, isn't it? So, by the formulation of permutation, we go like this, n p r, n is 4, p r is 2, then we have got to go for two terms starting from 4. So, the first term is 4 and the second term is 3 and we stop here. So, we get 12 ways, right? We go for the case 3. Here, we select 3 papers. Then, we have this scenario that the first box will get four options, second time we will get three ways and the third time we will get two ways. So four times three times two that means 24. So here you write n p r is four 
P3. So R equal to 3 means we have to go for 3 terms, right? Or 3 factors. So 4, 3, 2. We stop here. And we get 24 ways, right? And when the student gets passed in all the 4 papers, we get 4 boxes here. First time he will get 4 ways, then he will get 3 ways, then he will get 2 ways, then he will get 1 way. So 4 times, 3 times, 2 times, 1, it will also give you 24 ways. So we write here NPR equal to 4P4, that means we have to go for 4 terms, 4, 3, 2 and 1 becomes 24 ways. So the total possible number of report cards. How will you do? Four ways. If the student gets one paper cleared, so you write here four. If the student gets two papers cleared, then you write 12. And then in case of three papers, you write 24. And in case of four papers, you write 24 also. And you get 24 plus 24, 48 plus 1260 plus 464. So in total, we can have the report cards in 64 ways given this condition. Clear? Now you go for permutation of items with similarity. Suppose there are total item count is n and there are k types of items in that collection. Suppose type 1 is having p1 pieces of items. Type 2 is having P2 pieces of items. Type 3 goes with P3 and up to type K it is having with PK pieces of items, right? If you have the scenario like this, then you can have a total number of arrangements when all the items will be taken at a time that N factorial by P1 factorial times P2 factorial times P3 factorial and it goes up to PK factorial. So this will be factorial. Let's go with an example. How many different signals are possible with two red, three green and one blue and four yellow lights using all the lights at a time? Now the scenario goes like this that A is a red light is two pieces, green light is three pieces, blue one is having one piece and the yellow light is having four pieces, right? Now here N equal to 2 plus 3, 5 plus 1, 6 plus 4, 10. That means 10 total signals are there. And you have these different types over there. So according to this formula, we can have total number of arrangements is 10 factorial by 2 factorial times 3 factorial times 1 factorial times 4 factorial, right? So these are the different ways of different signals you can have when you have these types of lights using all the lights at a time. Now we go for circular permutation. These are the different items we have and we can have these arrangements. So this is arrangement 1, this is 2, this is 3 and this is 4. So notice here is that A, B, C, D are there and after that we start from D and it goes to A again to form this A, B and C. Then we start from C to D and after D it gets back to A again. And here B, C and D then after that it goes to A again. So these are the different arrangements we can have. We can have 24 arrangements as we have seen before. But out of those 24 arrangements we are considering only these 4 arrangements. Now, now there is a reason. See here this circular formation and if we start from A we can have this A1. If we start from D, then we can have this one. If we start from C, we can have this one. And if we start from B, then we can have this one. So the linear permutation is giving you four different arrangements, but the circular permutation is giving you only one arrangement. So you can write four linear arrangements equal to one circular arrangement. Now, if it goes like this, then we can find out the number of circular arrangements with all the different arrangements over here in case of linear arrangement. So the total arrangement a linear permutation can create for you is 4 factorial, isn't it? When you take all the 4 items at a time. So in case of 4 factorial linear arrangements, 
you can have 4 factorial by 4 that is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 by 4 3 factorial so when linear permutation gives you 4 factorial arrangements the circle permutation gives you 3 factorial arrangements and this has happened considering both the clockwise as well as anti-clockwise directions because you see here if b stays over here you bring d and then c and then a then if you start from b according to this arrangement then you go like this to d and then to c and then to a so you see that you are moving anti-clockwise you may have this b to d in a clockwise as well as anti-clockwise and from d to c you are moving anti-clockwise and then you are moving from c to a via clockwise or anti-clockwise so the total arrangements there is 24 arrangements given by this linear permutation is considering the clockwise as well as anti-clockwise arrangements so based on that if you have like this that 4 factorial of linear arrangements is equal to 3 factorial of circular arrangement then you can write easily that n factorial of linear arrangement will give you n minus 1 factorial for circular arrangement and in some specific cases if you have that the direction is in one way that is either clockwise or anti-clockwise then you can write n factorial of linear arrangement will give you n minus 1 factorial by 2 arrangements in case of circular permutation. Let us have an example. There are seven computers. Two computers work as PDC and BDC, that is primary domain controller and backup domain controller. Uh, these are actually used in computer networks. And these two computers, this PDC and BDC, are always adjacent to each other. Now, how many ways these computers can be arranged to conform with ring topology? Now, in ring topology, the computers are arranged in a circular fashion. So, these are the computers you have. P is for PDC and B is for BDC. This is one of the arrangements the network can have. So, you can see that P and B are adjacent to each other and the rest of the computer's locations may change. But, there will be no computer between this P and B. That means, these two computers are treated as one computer. So, physically, there are seven computers in total, but logically, there are six computers, right? So, n is equal to 6. So, according to your circular permutation, we can have n minus 1 factorial because we are taking all the 6 computers at a time, right? So, we go like this that n minus 1 factorial means 6 minus 1, that means 5 factorial, that means 120 ways. Now, this is not the end. A little bit more we have to do. See the question. They have told you adjacent to each other. In this figure, P is here and B is here. It may happen that B is here and P is here. There is no harm. So, we have to find out in how many ways this P and B can be arranged. Now, this portion you can handle using the linear permutation concept. So, in linear permutation concept, if you follow that, then you have N equal to 2 say n1 is better because n has already been used here so n1 is 2 and you are taking two computers at a time so r is equal to 2 so you apply n p r that means 2 p 2 that means 2 times you have to go like this that's 2 times 1 that means 2 ways now for each way you have 120 ways of this circular formation right so, one way of P and B, we can have 120 ways of circular arrangements. Now, for two ways of P and B, we can have 120 times 2 equal to 240 ways. Now, we talk about combination. We have already defined, it's just a grouping of items. 
Here also the value of R may be less than or equal to the total number of items. That means R less than or equal to M. So here we go with the four coins. Now if we take one item that means R equal to 1 then we can have that 4 factorial by 4 minus 1 factorial dot 1 factorial. Now I will explain you what is the meaning of this. If you have n equal to 4 coins like this and you take one coin at a time then simply you can have four ways to fill this cube. Now this 4 factorial by 4 minus 1 factorial is actually the total number of arrangements you are having based on position. That means this is the number of permutations you can have when you have four coins and taking one at a time. Now this extra one factorial here, what this is doing here, it is actually discarding the rearrangements of those same elements. For this example, you will have only this formation that is either A or B or C or D. Now this portion will be more clear to you when you handle with two items taken at a time. We take four coins that is n equal to four and we have r equal to two here and we can have these pairs as different and unique arrangements according to permutation. So this portion is creating these outputs. So a b is there, a c is there and a d is there. But you see that b a and a b. A is in front, but here A is, is behind B. Permutation considers these two as unique arrangements, but combination does not permit this. It says that here AB is involved, here also AB is involved. Maybe B is in front of A and here B is behind A, but it doesn't matter. So, combination will consider this AB and BA as a one combination, but we take the help of the permutation to get this list right so we have to discard those rearrangements of the same items so to do that we have to go for this two factorial because these are the different ways the same items may get inside this list and we have to discard it we go for the next case here we have r equal to 3 and n equal to 4. now when we perform this permutation we get this and there are rearrangements of the same items. So to discard those, we have to go for this 3 factorial here. And after this, we get these 4 items. So we have got 4 ways or 4 combinations from this whole list of 24 arrangements. And for the next case that is taken 4 at a time using n equal to 4, we have this permutation and we are discarding 4 factorial now. So there is only one combination. So when permutation says 24 arrangements, combination says there is only one combination. So it goes like this that n c r is n factorial by n minus r factorial times r factorial. We go for an example. A connection is established when a person calls another. There are six persons in total. How many connections will be established? Now, here are the six persons we have. And suppose P1 is connected with P4 for calling, right? So these two people are talking. Now, you see, this is a case of combination. Why? Because if I say that P1, comma P4, whatever I write inside this bracket, we say that P1 is connected to P4. Similarly, if we write P5, comma P3, then P5 and P3 are connected. Now, if I write again that P4, comma P1, it is useless, isn't it? Because P1 is connected to P4, it implies that P4 is also connected to P1. So this arrangement is useless. So we see that rearrangement of the arrangements are useless here. So it's purely a problem of combination. So before attempting to these questions, you have to make sure that whether the problem is talking about permutation or combination. Whenever you will see that there is a point of rearrangement going on and the rearrangement matters, then you go for permutation. And whenever you see that rearrangement doesn't matter, only the items will do, then you go for combination. So for handling this kind of question, you must be very practical. Otherwise, if somebody uh, doesn't have any idea about this calling business and they say that P1 is connected to P4, 
that doesn't mean that P4 is connected to P1, then it will be difficult for that person to handle this kind of problem. So here we have possible number of combinations of six persons when taken two at a time, right? So it's purely a combination problem. So you write six C2, right? So it goes like there's a six factorial by six minus two factorial and two factorial here. You compute this and get the number of ways over here. So this was our discussion regarding permutation and combination. If you have any kind of question, you may write in the comment section down below. And in the next video, we will talk about binomial theorem.